I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But the king of glory is trustworthy. He is reliable. He is dependable. The problem is not in his hand. But we are the one that God cannot trust. Can you ask your neighbor? Say, can the king of glory truly trust you? Hey! Ha -ha. Ask somebody, say, can the Lord? Oh, can this God trust you? Can he trust you? Can he trust you? Can he trust you? Can he rely on you, my father? Can you ask somebody else? Say, can the Lord trust you? He's reliable. <laughs> we can lean on him. And we are secured. The prayer can heal in on you. <laughs> and know that he's secured. It is a question that is begging for an answer. That question is begging for an answer. You can lean on the Lord. Yeah. When he said jump, you can jump. Knowing that he will catch you. But the question this morning, can the Lord hey, ha -ha, jump and know that you can catch him? He's begging for an answer. If you cannot answer this question, that means we need help in this place. Can the Lord rely on you? Can he depend on you? He's been asking me this question for the past three weeks. And I said, I'm not going to keep it to myself. When the Lord begins to ask such question, he's up to something. He's about to test somebody so you can be promoted. So the question deep down in your heart, can the Lord truly trust you? So today's message is time to just go ahead and sit down. It's titled, Can God Trust You? Are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Are you dependable? To define trustworthy, we are saying we are dependable. My God. We are reliable. We are responsible. We are safe. We are secured. We are solid. We are steady. We are sure. Hey, we've been tried and tested and we've come out as gold. My God, my God, my God, my God, you are trustable. That's what you are saying. Trustworthy. I remember when I was growing up, I cannot forget that. This happened over maybe like 30 years ago. But I can't forget because I got born again as a child. I got born again very young in Catholic Charismatic Movement. So, and you know, as a child, there's some honesty that you have in you. When you do something that is not right, the Lord will chastise you. I remember vividly, I told one horrible lie. That caused some, that almost caused somebody, let me say, their life. And I was okay doing that. But when I got home, let me pray like I used to pray, like Samson. Once I opened my Bible, in black and white, very bold, what I saw is trustworthy. And I'm telling you, this is my own personal encounter. What I saw in the Bible is trustworthy. I begin to cry. I said, God, have mercy on me. Have mercy as a child. Then if I was too old, maybe 17, or I was a teenager. Say, trustworthy. Can you be trusted? How do you expect to go to the next level when I cannot trust you here that you are? Can the Lord trust you? My God. The Lord is asking me to ask some of us here that have father-in-law, have mother-in-law, what is your relationship with them? What is your relationship? Can they confide in you? Can they call you and tell you what is going on in the home and you will not take side? I don't know who the Lord is asking this question. You will say because it's my daughter, because it's my son. 
I need to support them. Are you willing to stand by the truth? The Lord used Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. Is it Jethro? That is father-in-law. To minister to him, to redirect him. How many of us here is Ezo Nyagwalam? Let me interpret. Ezo Nyagwalam means a king that no one can give instruction. That's what it means. Nobody can tell you anything. My God. A tree can never make a forest. I don't know why I'm deviating. But can God trust you? Your child can advise you. Can say, Daddy, you know what you did wasn't right. Have you ever given thoughts to what that child said? Some will say, who, who born you, Seth? Are you the dad or I'm the dad? The Bible says from the mouth of infant and suckling and babies, the Lord have ordained it. That means even a little child can get you thinking. My, the Lord have used my children to redirect me severally. I'm not even joking. When I begin my, my worry mood, and so I can solve the, the, the problem of the whole world. I will see one and say, Mommy, but that's what you preached the other day. Why can't you live like your preaching said? And when they say that, it kind of knocks me back into alignment. What this child is saying makes sense. Why not go back and listen to that message and do what the message said? Are you preaching to people when you have not preached to yourself? May God have mercy. The Lord used Moses' father-in-law to redirect him. But I say a word that I want you to pick from what the father-in-law said. Exodus 18, 21 to 23. He said, but select capable men from all the people. Men who fear God. NIV said, trustworthy men. Underline that in your Bible. I think King James says, men of truth. Which is the same thing of being a trustworthy man. Can somebody trust you? Can a sister in the church trust you with her private life? They look at you as a mother. And they pull you aside. I just got married. And my husband is doing that. What kind of advice do you give to them? Even in the church, there are people that their job is divide and rule. There are people in the church, even the Bible says, it is somewhere in the book of Ezekiel. He said there are men. Ezekiel 11. Ezekiel 11. Let's look at Ezekiel 11 from verse 1. He said, then the spirit of the Lord lifted me up and brought me to the gate of the house of the Lord that faces the east. To the gate of what? The house of the Lord. People come to church knowing that that is where they will be giving godly advice. But listen. He said, there at the entrance of the gate were 25 men. And I saw among them Jezenia, son of Aaron, and Philetian, son of Benaha, leaders of the people. Look at verse 2. Say, the Lord said to me, son of man, these are the men who are plotting evil and giving what? Wicked advices. I didn't say that's what the Bible says. And they are giving what? Wicked advice. When you give wicked advice, that means you are wicked. And the Bible said, do what? Suffer not the witch to leave. The wicked must not go unpunished. Can God trust you? The Lord has been busy with us for the past over like a month now. This person bought house there. That person bought house there. This person bought car here. This person, things are going. People are getting blessed. 
And you're asking, why am I not getting blessed? Because some of us are not reliable. We're not trustworthy. The Lord cannot trust you where you are now. He cannot trust even, even you at renting, at renting somebody's house. He cannot trust you. Some of us, we leave people's house, we pull everything pullable. So we pull the, 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 the toilet seat. Will that be a plate for you to eat with? I don't know why. I'm telling you by experience. They will scatter everything. By the time you go in there, it will cost you so much money to repair the mess they have done. And you think God will give you your own house? Think again. Can the Lord trust you with people's information that no other person know about? It was a privilege because you don't, you, you are not even at the level to know it, but you were privileged to hear it. And by the time you turn around, it's not CNN news. Everybody is talking about it. Then how are you expecting the Lord to promote you? How are you expecting him to open your eyes to see beyond the physical? Or hear beyond the physical? Because the one that he told you, you didn't do well with it. We need to be reliable. Say men that are Trust what men that are trust what men that we do as the Lord has spoken to them, men that will be glad when they see when they sleep at night, they get a revelation of seeing Pastor Jesse in private jet, and they will come and say, Pastor, I saw you in private jet. Not the one that will come when they see me in casket. Come for me, bad thing. We are carrying some of our careers of bad news. The Lord gives you revision about where He's taking your sister to be happy and let them know. Make up your mind. Say, Lord, anoint my ear. So I can hear good, and I will carry it to the ends of the earth. Can the Lord? Depend on you. Can he rely on you? That you will not air your dirty linen outside. By the time you are talking about a member of King Sons, and you are, and you are a member, you are talking about yourself. That's how they all are. When you leave, say, eh? Is that what happened in that place? You are still there. You have not left. God, I want every one of us to be blessed. But some of us, we are holding ourselves down. Can the Lord rely on you as the head of the choir? So he can promote you to a minister. Can the Lord rely on you as a worker in the choir? So he can make you the head of the choir. Can he rely on you even as a church member? Say, I know I will see Sister Taiwo in church tomorrow. I know if no other person came to encourage my daughter, I know Sister Taiwo, Sister Blessing, Sister Joy will be there. Can the Lord rely on you? That when he come looking for you, your seat will not be empty. Like he went looking for Adam. That he always had fellowship with Adam every morning. But when he came looking for Adam, his seat, his place was empty. Adam have gone hiding because on your national local. Praise the Lord. Let me interpret. Because Adam had poo poo in the church. That's why he ran. And the Lord is the one looking for him. Can we be relied upon? We are asking the Lord, Father, expand our coast. Give us the Holy Land Empire. The Son, but know that he gave you. What are you doing with it? That is the question. What are you doing with San Benedino only? As small as this city is. And you want the Holy Land Empire. For where? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You need to be tested and tried and proved. It is not me, but the word. You are asking the Lord for husband. 
But as a single lady, you have not served the Lord the way you should serve him. If you cannot love God enough, how can you love somebody's son? How can you love somebody's daughter? That's a question. Begging for an answer. You are asking God for children. The one he gave you, are you taking care of them? Or you leave them and go from party to party? There is party in Katangara. You are the first person to open the door. But we are begging you to come to church on a Sunday. But let one of your friend from Iraq, no, Kuwait or Russia, call you and say, we are having party. It's going to go down in Russia. What is the other country they're having the war? Russia and where? And Ukraine. You will not mind though that there is war. As long as it's party. Hey! You're on your way. So tell me how he will bless you when the one that he gave you, you have not taken care of the child. You run from job to job, over time to over time. So you can drive Lamborghini. He's appointed unto man to die once. What follows? Judgment. Queen Elizabeth don't die. They won't bury her with anything. Yes. She will, when you see her hand, her hand is empty. All those diamond people are running out. Hey, he took that diamond from, uh, uh, from Biafra land. He took one from Nigeria. And he took one from South Africa. She is not going with any of them. The next queen will inherit it like she inherited from somebody else. So all those things you are running after, who sigh? My dad will ask us, say who sigh? I don't know the meaning. Say, after all these things, who sigh? After all those things you run around after, and you still want God, say, God, give me. Give you which child? The one that he gave you, what have you done with it? What have you done? You treat somebody as son, which is your husband, as if he's a second-hand citizen. Praise the Lord. Not knowing that you also have children and you have brothers. And a time is coming when somebody else will treat them like you treated somebody's son. The same thing applicable to men, the way you treat your wife. A day is coming. Your children will get married. And another man will do the same thing to them. We need to be careful. Let's be trustworthy. Let God trust us with the little things. That's why a lot of us, we are behind. People are leaving you. They are going forward. You are settling in, in the same. Because the one that the Lord has given you, you have not shown faithfulness. You have a job now. You clock in whenever you want. And clock out whenever you want. And you put in whatever hours you want. The Lord is watching you. How will he trust you with your own business? When you treated other people's business as if it's trash. When because of you, a lot of businesses folded up. They closed the door because you went there and did your own thing. How will God bless you? It's something to think about. Something to think about. We need to be careful. Be careful. Can God trust you with an important position? Question. Begging for an answer. Knowing that those that you are overseeing will not be praying for you to die. There are leaders that you have. Go and read Psalm 109. And you are praying that another person will take their place. Think about all this. How do you get promoted? You know, in life, my dad always tells us, say, whatever you do in life, he said it's in God. You know what that means? Hold it for me. Whatever you do in life. When he started giving us advice, say, wherever you go, make sure you do this. My dad had six girls and five boys. All of us, six girls, married till today. 
Because of some of the advice that he, he, you know, he tells us. Say, whatever you do, wait for your turn. You treat people's daughters anyhow, wait for your turn. You will have, God will make sure that you have son and have daughters. So when your own time come, you don't use your eyes to see your father-in-law. Your mother-in-law, you better don't come here. None of you, when it's your own turn, another person's daughter will say, don't you ever cross here. It is my kitchen. Even when you come, you will not eat. Everything in life you are doing, you are saying, please, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day, there is a payback time. You block every other person except you. My God. Can God truly trust you? That whatever he tells you to do, that you will do. First Corinthians 14. You can read from 8 to 17. I'm not going to read it. First Chronicles, sorry, 14. From 8 to 17. The Bible says there. From, I'm going to just read 14 to 17. It says, so David inquired of God again. And God answered me. He said, do not go directly after them, but circle around them. And attack them in the front of the poplar tree. He said, as soon as you hear the sound of marching in the, true, in the tops of the poplar tree. He said, move out to the battle. Because that will mean God has come out in front of you to strike the Philistines. Amen. Verse 16 says, so David did as God commanded him. David did what? As God commanded him. And I'm going to be honest with you. The Lord is always giving us instruction. Can he depend on you? On those little instructions that he gives you. That you will keep to it. Can the Lord rely on you? Can he? When you get a chance, you can read the book of Matthew 25, from 14 to 30. Matthew 25, from 14 to 30. It's talking about the talent. Talking about the talent. Let me just read a little bit. Say again, from 14. He said, again, it will be like a man going on a journey. Who called his servant and entrusted his word to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags of gold. And to another, praise the Lord, one bag. Each according to his ability. That's what I want us to see. He gave everybody according to their ability. And if you go reading, the one that got five brought another five back. The one that got two brought another two back. But the one that got one, which represent most of us, including me, that is here talking. We underrate what we have. That's part of the reason why a lot of us, it looks like we're not getting blessed. Because you underrate what you have. Yes. The anointing you don't honor will never bless you. I don't care how old the preacher is. I don't care how old the leader is. I don't care how old the owner of that company is. He's your boss. Whether you like it or not, too bad. Praise the Lord. He had one. At least he had something. The Lord told Moses in Exodus, I think it's Exodus chapter 2, Moses was busy looking and asking, how will I face Pharaoh? What will I do and what will I not do? But the Bible made Moses to understand. That's, that's uh, Exodus chapter 3. That you have something in your hand. The stuff you have in your hand that you think is nothing has a lot of potential. A lot of force where we are. 
Because you underrate yourself. You underrate the gift the Lord has given you. There is something in you that the Lord needs to make the best out of you. He had one. He refused to do anything with that because he's looking for more. I have a brother that over 10 years ago, we gave him, we got a shop for him and got him, gave him enough money to buy half trailer load of cement to put in the shop. He said he put the money in the account because he's looking for one trailer load. Till today, that shop over 10 years ago was never opened. And now, we went back to the normal every month. I didn't eat. My children didn't have food. The school fee have not been paid. That money was there until we don't know what happened to it. That's what happened to some of us. I've given you my testimony. You don't need anything. All you need is faith in the Lord. Take a walk, a step of faith. That's all you need. He buried the 600,000 naira at that time. If you change it to dollar, then it's like $5,000 at that time. Change $5,000 now. It's about 3.5 million or 3.2 million. So imagine what would have happened if he got busy with that money and did not bury the money. And when you, when, when, when you put money away and there is none coming in, by the time you turn around, it's gone. We need to value what we have. Value what, it, what you have. Even if you don't have anything, value the grace of God upon your life. That's enough to take you to where you need to be. That servant buried the one talent. When the master came back, what happened? He collected the one talent. He did not keep it to himself. He gave it to the person that came back with five. Yes. May that not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Let's learn to value what we have so that the Lord can bless us. So he can bless us. We are always busy holding on to, oh, this happened, that happened. I cannot do this because this happened to me. They said this happened to me. They said there's no money. The Bible says in, four, in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 8 to 10, he said, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles. Every day, the psalmist said, every day is loaded with trouble of his own. And as believers, I was telling our school of disciples yesterday, if I tell you that when you become a disciple, you will not be, you will not have triumph. I'm lying to you. That gospel is from the pit of hell. But don't allow the trials and the tribulation and the tests that you go through to hinder who you are. How you treat those children that the Lord has given you goes a long way to help them. Are you among those fathers that talk trash about your children? You look at them, you tell them rubbish. It has a way to be stuck in their head. And then when they go out there, they are, they are, they are friends. Because they, they, they are already feeling low self-esteem. You know, if my dad or my mom think about me, I wonder, you know, you know, because you are close to them, because you are a close family member, they take everything that come out of your mouth. Serious. Their friend can say, and when they come home and you are telling them something better, whatever they are told in school will flush. And all they hear is what their parents tell them. Let's be careful. Can God trust us that these children will prosper in our hand? And God trusts us. He said that, that it was, the Bible was saying, I think in the other first, second Timothy, the Lord was talking about Eunice, the grandmother of Timothy, and was saying, I can trust you. She took care of a grandmother, she took care of her grandchild. A lot of you sitting and watching, even to watch your grandchildren, you have to collect money. Say, what thing happened? 
Is that money that serious? Is it that serious? Some of you, you come to those houses. By the time you come, there's peace everywhere. When you come, you ignite fire in the home. It is not of God. The Lord needs to be able to trust you to take you to the next level. He needs to be able to trust you to take you to the next level. And I'm going to ask you another question. Even in the midst of trials and tribulation, can God still trust you? The three Hebrew children in Daniel chapter 3 were under fire. But God could still rely on them. Daniel in Daniel 6 was under fire. And God can still rely on him. The question is, can God rely on some of us just small, chickeny problem? We already say, I'm not going to church anymore. I see if church is your problem. But that's what the enemy does. He push you away from those that will tell you the truth. He push you away from people that will look at your face and say you are going cro crooked away. He push you from those that will encourage you. That's what that wicked devil does. See, if he's able to succeed in that, that means he got you. Can God trust you when you look at that, that fridge and there's no food? Can God trust you as a man of God, as a woman of God, that you will not begin to garnish the word of God so that you can get money from the people? Can God trust you that you will still speak the truth even when your income is coming from the church? Even if the leaders choose not to sign my check, I will still speak the truth from this altar. Can God trust you like that? Yes. May God have mercy. May God help us. May God help us. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1 that God trusted Job so much that he could brag with Job. Can the Lord brag with you? Those questions, they are begging for answer. Can he brag with you? He bragged with Job. And what happened in Job 42 verse 12? So the Lord blessed the latter days of Job. He bragged with Job. Job did everything, including cause the day he was born, but he never caused God. Are you hearing me this morning? This message is not for everybody. It's for selected few. Those that are willing to make a change so that the Lord can bless you. And I want every one of you to be blessed. That's why I will speak the truth from this altar. I don't care what the consequences may be. I will speak the truth. Come rain, come sunshine. You might not like the way I say it too bad. But I'm saying it because I want you to be blessed. Even if it's one person that is left in King's Assembly. But that person is blessed. And that person is on their way to heaven. The day the trumpet sound. That's good enough. Are you hearing me this morning? May the Lord minister to every one of us. Can the Lord trust you to do this work with all your heart? You are only vibrant. You are only ready to do things when you are the one in charge. That is a demonic spirit. It is not from God. If you are not in charge, every, you do everything to run whatever the person is doing down. If the house is not your own, you talk it down. Even if it's half bedroom and half toilet. You go there. Praise the person. Ah, God is good. Because I cannot provide half bedroom and half toilet. And God provided it. He's a good God. The Lord is taking you somewhere. This is just the beginning. But don't go there. And we are good in tearing other people down. We are good in holding. You know, I, I, I was somewhere. I think I know when it's on Thursday. And the person in the room with me was talking to another person that knew me very well. But that person never knew I was in the same room. When she was done talking, and she, was, she spoke about me. The following day I called her and I, you know, I prayed with her. Say, you are a good woman. 
She never knew I was in there. To see the way she was talking about me, the way she was praising me, Pastor Jesse, this and that, I'm like, wow. So there are still people on the face of the earth can, can talk like this. People that appreciate the goodness of God in people's life. Not those that the goodness of God gives diarrhea. Unless if it's in their life, he gives them diarrhea. It's not of God. I know some of you don't like the white top, but it's okay. You need to speak it like this. Because we all need to make it in this life. The Bible in Genesis 1, after the Lord created man in his own image, he said, take dominion. And you cannot take dominion if you are not blessed. We need to be blessed. Told John verse 2, Be Lord, I wish above all things that thou may it prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospered. And those things will not happen if our life is not set right. Yes. As I'm speaking, may the Lord himself help me. May the trials of life not allow me to deviate from the truth. And the same thing applicable to you. The question I'm going to ask you as I round up is one. Can God trust you with money? Can he trust you with success? Or will your success bring God headache? The Bible says, I think it's Genesis chapter 6. He said God felt bad. He, he grieved God because he made man. Genesis 6 verse 6. He said the Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth. And his heart was filled with pain. Does the blessing of God cause heartache for the Lord when he bless you? Or does it draw you closer to him? Can the Lord trust you that a sister in this house, that, they, that maybe something happened and they don't have a place to stay, and we're all asking, can somebody bring one penny? Can somebody bring two pennies? Can, can God trust you that he know that you have the money? You know, there was a time before we put the carpet and the light. Then we, then we mopped the floor. And that day we came to clean, and I saw somebody's bank you know how you go to bank ATM and then the ATM will give you a printout. That time, over maybe 12, 13 years ago, this person that is a church member where there is no carpet on the ground, there is no light. Those uh, outside uh, 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 floor took us over a month. And it wasn't up to two, uh, three or four thousand dollars. And that person over 28,000. I said, Chai, how wicked can people be? Oh? <laughs> how wicked he said in this kind of a place can God trust you can he trust you that if he give you that money that, I, that the rest of the church members will not starve that you will not be like Ananias and Sapphira that sold their own money they took all the glory and they lied upon on top of it can he really trust you can he the Bible in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 says, For the love of money is what? The root of all evil. The love of money. Not money. Money is good. Money answered all things. But the love of money is the root of all evil. Show me your checkbook and I will tell you where your heart is. Where a man's treasure is, that's where their heart is. Can the Lord trust you as a wife? That you are the one making the most money in the house. That your husband will not be begging you, honey, can you bring half of the rent? God forbid. You should pay that, actually carry the money and give to him. You bring down your check. I, you know, I tell you, when my husband was here, then I wasn't working. He will, that's why whatever I cannot give to that man, I can't give to any other person. I, wasn't, I didn't work for over two, three years. But he will work. And I'm not telling you to do this anymore. He will work and he will bring his check. Go to the bank, cash the money, and give to me to put in the account. Then he will use the ATM. 
I'm not even joking. So whatever I cannot give to him, I will never give to anybody in this life. And I'm very serious. Can that man trust you? Can that woman trust you that you were made before you married her? And she's not hearing every time. I had this chair before you came into this house. And now you have scattered it. I have this car before I married you. Now you and your children are eating inside the car. Whose children are they? They're not your children. Can God trust you with money? It's important. I'm speaking to some people that want to make things right. Number two, can God trust you with anointing? That when he anoints you, open your eyes like he opened the eyes of Elijah, Elisha. The eyes of Moses was open to see. Will you be able to keep people's secrets secret? Or when they are done talking? Remember when I came here newly? I always, you know what? I have had the experience. Me and my husband will fight though. No jokes. We'll fight. I mean, I will become the referee in the middle. Mommy, then me like she was like two, three years old. Mommy, it's okay. Daddy, it's okay. And then we'll go to our pastor and lay all the complaint. I'll be the first person to run to pastor. Say, so you see, and I'm the one that is the problem, not him. When, there, when, when, when we had problem with that same pastor, it was part of what he was talking to people about. These two that can't even take care of their family. That can't even, I'm telling you, this is my own story. Can God trust you with people's secrets? That they have no other person to, but because of you are privileged to hear it, can it be just you and them? Or will it become national anthem? Everybody is hearing it. I want us to stand. May the Lord Almighty help us. Number three, can God trust us with power? Hey! When you are in charge, if that person is in trouble, you are the pastor of the church every Sunday, they must hear my voice so, as if you are the only one that God has given the word. You put everybody in the bottle and cover it. It is not of God. Can God trust you? It's a question. You are a man. You are the head of the house, of your home. Outside God being on top, you are the nurse. Can that wife be able to go wherever she is, is running home? Because she has a loving husband. Is that possible? Or with the children here that you are coming, everybody is taking cover. That is coming. May God have mercy on us. When you married that man, he had a job. Then after you married him, he lost his job. Now you sit and you talk to him like he's nothing. He become a catch potato. All you do is flip channel, flip channel, flip channel. I cook, you eat. Come on. Can God trust you? Can he really trust you? Can he trust you? Can God trust you with an opposite sex? Listen to me. Sally the youths. You are trusting God for a husband but you are sleeping around. You already have a husband now. You just don't have not paid your bride price. A man says hi to you. The next thing you are in his house. You are misbehaving. He will never marry you. And I'm telling you now. Listen to me. Joseph had the chance to misbehave, but he refused to misbehave. A lot of promises were laid on the ground for him, but he refused. You want that man to marry you? Open your eyes. Don't become a wife when you, when you, when you are not yet a wife. You are cooking and cleaning and doing laundry. Who are you? Mrs. Nobody. May God have mercy. Listen to me. I really want you guys to listen. Tell the singles. And when you come to me, you hear me say the same thing to you. Look, I will look at and I will tell you. When you start crying, oh, that brother, he did this, he used me, he dumped me. You used yourself and you dumped yourself. Because it's your fault. Or that sister, can we learn to allow God to trust us? Just, just talk to the Lord as we round up. My time is spent.
Just talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you. Say, Father, you can trust me. I can go to the next level, Lord. Can you talk to the Lord? Talk to him. Talk to him. And if he can trust you, he can take you to the next level. Talk to the Lord. May the Lord Almighty help us. May he minister. You are, you are hearing me and you don't have relationship with Jesus. Because he's the one that will give you the grace, the enablement, the strength to be able to do all these things I have mentioned this morning. Just talk to the Lord. Let's not allow our position to get into our head. The money in your account to get into your head. Who you think you are to get into your head. We need peace in our life. We need peace in our home. We want to, want to get to the next level of life. Talk to the Lord. Whatever you do for your brother, your sister, there is a reward that comes with it. I always pray and say, God, don't allow me to be the one to beg for money. Because if I beg, nobody will give me. But give it to me and I will willingly and freely give it out. Say, Father, help me. I need to go to the next level. But I need to pass this level that I am now with flying color. It's like a child that is in, in, that is in grade one. If you don't pass grade one, you, can, you cannot go to the next level. Say, Father, help me. Help me, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.